confession makes a little part of me die inside. Edward and Bella are glorified for their love, and yet their relationship represents so many things that hurt women, men, and their relationships. Bella Swan, mild, submissive, and irrational. She's an instrument of her own impulsive emotions, and even though we're told that she's smart, we never actually see any evidence of that. As soon as she moves to Forks with her dad, she begins cooking and cleaning for him and tells the reader that this is her place. Then she falls into fatuous love with sparkly vampire Edward Cullen and immediately submits to his every whim. She loses all sense of identity as a character and obsesses over Edward in page after page of unimaginative dialogue. She abandons her friends, she abandons her family, she abandons everything really, so it's no surprise that when Edward leaves her, she completely loses herself. That's because Bella as a character doesn't have a sense of self. In Stephanie Meyer's twisted fantasy, she's a reckless, ruin everything damsel in distress that just needs a man to save her over and over and over again. The harm isn't all to women. Twilight's messages hurt men too. It tells them that their value is in driving expensive cars and having lots of money, in being the fastest and the strongest, in being competitive and territorial, and worst of all, in being abusive. Yeah, Edward is an abuser. Abusers use domination, isolation, threats, blame, and intimidation to exert power and control over their victim. Edward practices domination by constantly making decisions for Bella and telling her what to do. Oh, this is downplayed in the book as him being adorably overprotective. He pressures her to go to prom when she doesn't want to, he sets all the rules for their sexual conduct, he won't let her drive, he stalks her and watches her while she sleeps. In the story we see isolation happen by Bella's own free will, an example of Bella's internalized oppression. She loses all of her relationships and becomes fiercely dependent upon Edward. Edward threatens Bella non-stop, but it's disguised as his vampiric nature. He's in a constant struggle not to kill her, and blame is sweetly placed on Bella for smelling good. I don't like when someone blames rape on a woman for looking good. Throughout the stories, Bella is often afflicted with cuts, scrapes, and bruises from Edward's violence, but it's dressed up as his uncontrollable strength. Edward uses a combination of his moodiness and physical abilities to intimidate. He drives recklessly with her in the car and flaunts his powers to Bella's other suitors in order to intimidate. Bella is powerless to him, and Edward's behavior preserves that powerlessness. In an abusive relationship, we see the abuse happen in cycles, often ending with an increasingly brief honeymoon period. We see this with Edward too. When he feels remorse, he buys her an expensive gift or plays piano for her. I guess all is forgiven, right? In Twilight it is! The story paints this as an expression of his love, same scenario when Jacob sexually assaults Bella. Bella's character is written to actually accept the sexual violence. In the story, I kept expecting Bella to stand up for herself, but no. The assault goes on to be addressed as an expression of Jacob's affection. This was actually the awakening moment for me when I was reading the series. One of the main ways that we learn about how relationships should look is from the media that we consume, from books and TV and movies. We're processing those messages 24 hours, 7 days a week, whether or not we realize it. And Stephanie Meyer, Shame on Her, has written a story promoting a certain kind of harmful relationship around tolerating and even glorifying abuse. Even Arpax himself came out against this, saying, quote, Girls are always saying Edward is so perfect, but he's not. I don't like it when per people try to exert control in a relationship when there's an imbalance. This is very wrong and very strange. And herein lies my vehement dislike of Twilight. When I read this story, I don't just see a fictional character that's being abused. I see millions of young, impressionable minds subconsciously learning to accept and even to want abuse. I see young people being told in a particularly powerful way that this is what true love looks like. That, to me, is a lot scarier than vampires and werewolves.